Hello, Art Song friends, and welcome to episode three of Art Song Experiments. My name is Epen Leubner, and I'm the founder of Denver Art Song Project. If you don't know what an art song is, be sure to click the link in the description below this video to episode zero, Introducing Art Songs. It'll get you all caught up and you'll be ready to go. If you're enjoying these videos, please consider becoming a patron. You have the opportunity to participate in polls and help us decide what songs we are going to explore on our CDs, on our web show, in our recitals. So there are great opportunities to become a patron. We've put a link below, so be sure to click it and check it out. Also, be sure to like and share this video because you're gonna help us get the word out and we really wanna share this great genre with a lot of new people. Let's break out the agenda for episode three. First, we'll introduce you to the song and we'll talk about some of the options that a performer has when they're singing an art song. Next, we'll talk about art connections that span genres and how the art song can bring all of that together. And finally, we'll do an art song experiment. Art Song Experiment Episode 3 starts now. In episode one, we introduced you to Stefano Donaudi, the composer of this song, and I'll put a link in the description below so you can get caught up if you haven't seen it. Today, we're going to look at O Del Mio Amato Ben, another great melody that you can hum along with. Because an art song is not from a larger show, performers have an incredible amount of latitude in what they think the art song means. So, I'm going on the assumption that you're totally new to the art song genre. If you see five performers singing the same art song, each one will come at it with a different backstory or different internal experience for themselves. So for example, if you were to see Stephanie Blythe singing in a recital and singing this exact song that you're about to see, she'll probably come at it from a totally different point of view than I do, and that's okay. So let's take a moment to talk about the connections that you can make from an art song to other genres. When I was younger, I thought that uh, performing an art song would be all about finding that experience in my life that relates to an art song. Well, let me tell you, <laughs> that's not a super idea because that means that you're probably leading a very highly emotional life that it might be a little bit dangerous at times. Art song can cover a really wide range of experiences. Now, a little older and wiser, I'm connecting O Del Mio Amato Ben to Greek myths. There is actually a lot of connection in the poetry between what is being said and the story of Orpheus and Eurydice. Orpheus, the greatest of all the musicians, was absolutely destroyed when he was told that his wife Eurydice had been bitten by a snake and died. And I can imagine as I'm singing this song, Orpheus running through the empty rooms of his house, looking for her body, just torn apart as he goes seeking his lost love. And in a way, it starts him off on his journey into the underworld to try to save her. I've paired this song with the painting Orpheus and Eurydice in the style of Nicholas Poussin. I found it at the Metropolitan Museum of Arts website, which is actually one of the few happy places you can go on the internet. I'll put a link on the description below so that you can find the picture as well. Here is Stefano Donati's O Del Mio Amato Ben from Denver Art Song Project's first album, A Single Step. Oh, 
Thanks for joining us on Art Song Experiment episode 3. I've put the English translation in the text below this video, and there are a ton of links, so be sure to click away. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like and share. This will help us introduce new people who may not know anything about the art song genre to this great little piece of classical music. Do you really, really like this video? consider becoming a patron. There's a link below that'll take you to our Patreon site where you can participate in polls, you can see outtakes, you can even see our new Metacam. So be sure to check it out and consider becoming a patron today. Another way you can support the show is to buy a CD or listen on iTunes or Spotify. We've put links below as well. As always, we're gonna close with the words of the poet Theodore Rothke. If you can't think, at least sing.